Welcome to Unity with Haven. In this session, we're going to talk about Guidewise. And I'm actually going to do a few sessions about Guidewise. And I'm going to specifically focus on the teaching of Ian Clayton. The moment I went to Ian Clayton's conference and I listened to his teaching about the Guidewise First Love, I learned how to enter into the realm of Heaven and everything in my life completely changed. I think there was three or four major times when my life changed. The one when it was when I gave my life to Jesus, uh, the second one when I was baptized with the Holy Spirit, praying in tongues, uh, and then the third time is I went to a massive conference uh, and there was a few thousand people worshiping and the Lord just did a download in my spirit. And then that fourth time was when I walked into my gateway of first love. Everything in my life changed. Then later in my life, uh, I had an experience where I went into the river of the Father. And when that happened, I thought that was just the, the greatest uh, encounter I ever had with the Lord going into the Father, into His river. And so therefore, to, to understand how the gateway of the Spirit work opened up a new world for me. And that's what we're going to experience today. So I want to encourage you. Uh, just to honor Ian Clayton, please go to his uh, YouTube channel. It's uh, Son of Thunder. Uh, you can go there. You can uh, like his channel. You can also become a Patreon if you want to get more information uh, and uh, join them. Uh, so that, that's very important. Uh, please also like and subscribe to Unity with Heaven. But what I want you to do is I want you to not just only get the information, but I want you to set yourself to say, I am going to get that gateways in my spirit and in my soul and my body cleansed and I'm gonna go into the realm of heaven and I and I and I tell you if you can take this information and you can use it and you can work with it you are gonna see in the realm of heaven and your whole life will change enjoy it with me before we can understand how gateways work I think it's very important to look at the tabernacle the Lord showed Moses a picture and a pattern of the tabernacle that was in heaven. And he said to him, I want you to build an earthly version of what you have seen there. Now, what's interesting, when God shows us things, there's usually three places where the same pattern is manifested. One is in heaven, one is in a heart, and then one is the physical manifestation on the earth. So therefore, everything that God gives to you, He will give to you in heaven. You will give it to you in your heart and then there will be a manifestation in a natural realm. Even if you think about your throne of authority that God is giving to you, uh, you have a throne that you have in your heart where you, uh, that you abdicate and you ask Jesus to sit on a throne and then you sit in Christ, in Jesus, that's sitting on the throne on your heart. But we also seated with Christ in heavenly places in heaven. So that's the second throne. And then the third throne is the dominion and uh, the authority that then manifests in the realm around us as people and in the financial system and in businesses and the church and all of that uh, come in the sphere of our responsibility, our kingship and our lordship. And so there's always three thrones. Uh, now, the guideways is exactly the same thing. Uh, what happens in heaven, how the tabernacle functions, will also function in your uh, your spirit and soul and body, and it will also function in the realm around you. So quickly, let's look at the picture of the tabernacle. So now when you read the story about the tabernacle, uh, there was a cloud uh, by day and a column of fire uh, by night, or a pillar of fire, uh, and that was a picture of how the tabernacle of God was connected with heaven and how the glory of God uh, was one. And so uh, here's the picture of heaven and then we have the, the column of fire and that column of fire was exactly above the holy of holies. Uh, and now the holy of holies is a picture of the glory of God that is inside of us. Uh, and then the holy of holies was uh, a part of the holy place now the holy place had a curtain in between and so uh, the priest could go from the holy place into the holies of holies where the ark of the covenant was and so the holy place is actually a picture of our spirit that means the glory of god is actually resident in our spirit in the same way as the holies of holies was in the holy place okay then um, the, the holies of holies and the holy place, that's the glory of God and the spirit of God, was inside of the inner court. And so the inner court is a picture of our soul. 
and then finally on the outside of that is the outer court which is a picture of our body so you here in the tabernacle has a picture of the glory of god on the very inside then you got our spirit and then you have the soul and then on the outside of the soul uh, is the body and so in the same way when we pray for someone to get healed or we fill someone with the Holy spirit then the glory that's inside of us flow through uh, our gateway of first love into our spirit and then from our spirit into our soul from our soul into our body and out of our body into the other person that we are praying with now let's take a look at the gateways so again i'm going to start in heaven so out of heaven flows the river of the father now we understand in heaven uh, is uh, the throne of the father and out of his throne is flowing this river and that the the substance of that river is life and light and creativity and the glory of god and that actually comes out of god the father and the throne of the lamb and the throne of the holy spirit is in that river and so as that river flows it flows into uh, the the spirit of man into that area which is the holy of holies or uh, the glory of god inside okay now there is a gate between the glory inside of you and your spirit man and that gate is called the gateway of first love so in other words the way the glory of god is going to come and flood into you as a person and into your spirit is when jesus is uh, the first love of your life the moment he, you love him unconditionally and that guide is open then the glory of god flows into you and so that gateway of first love and that's the most important uh, of the guides to open up because the flow has to start from even uh, through the glory inside of you through your spirit then into your soul now the guides of the spirit uh, is um uh, there's eight guides of the spirit um, and the guides of the spirit is the way how you then bring the glory that's inside of you into your soul now the way we do it is through hope uh, it's faith it's prayer there's worship uh, reverence intuition revelation and fear of the lord okay so hope is that picture that god is showing you about the pattern that he has for you in heaven and so when you see it when you believe it uh, when you desire it then that builds faith in you uh, faith is then the activity to say i take responsibility for the picture that i've seen uh, and i'm taking firm action i'm speaking out what i've seen uh, i'm declaring it and so in that way i activate my faith through obedience and then comes prayer now prayer is simply speaking to god praying the saying back to him what he has already said and asking him you know in the scripture it says ask seek and knock and you will open and you will find and he will um you know ask and he will give to you uh, so and then we have worship uh, worship uh, is a picture of complete uh, um, surrender but surrender in the awe of who he is and, and glory worship is also a picture of just saying wow lord you're so amazing it's also worship is uh, saying to the lord i love you i adore you i want to spend time with you i want to be in intimacy with you uh, then we have reverence now reverence is surrender to the lord you know uh, when you humble yourself in the sight of the lord he will lift you up and that whole idea of humbling yourself and surrendering you yourself in the presence of god is reverence then we have intuition so intuition is something that god has built into your spirit man to to know and to come into agreement with what the spirit of god is saying so intuition almost express what the holy spirit is saying but without words just knowing then uh, there's revelation revelation is basking in the glory basking in the light of god and then things becomes illuminated and revealed uh, to you and then fear of the lord and fear of the lord is that an expression of obedience to what god wants you to do and so uh, those are the gates of how you bring the glory of god that's in your spirit man into your soul now once the glory of god comes into your soul then your soul can make a decision to allow the glory of god to flow through the soul into your body or not and so i got seven gates here uh, for your soul the first is your mind now your mind has a conscious a unconscious and a subconscious part to it uh, then there's your conscience so conscience is your filter 
everything in your life every decision everything that happens runs through your conscience just like oil would flow and, and be filtered through a filter and then your conscience will the whole time help you to be holy your conscience is supposed to be soft and supple and your conscience is supposed to bother you when you are doing something wrong and it's supposed to be very happy when you're doing the right thing uh, and then there's reasoning so reasoning is to say am i'm going to allow my thoughts to be on a level where god's thought is or on a lower level uh, as the thoughts of the flesh uh, the thought of this world and the desires of this flesh and so reasoning has to be cleansed uh, then there's the imagination so the imagination is a screen in your soul where your spirit your soul and your body broadcasts information so that you can see and so the only way you're going to perceive is when information gets uh, broadcasted onto your imagination screen so you can see and perceive what's going on now uh, a filter to your imagination screen is your hippocampus the hippocampus is the part in the brain that says is this real is this relevant is this uh, necessary to be focused on right now and so sometimes we see something in the spirit maybe you see an angel or god is speaking to you uh, but your hippocampus can maybe not have an anchor for what god is doing right now and then that information never gets to your imagination screen then you say i don't see and so we're going to have to build anchors in our lives to learn how to hear the voice of god uh, that's the, imag uh, the imagination and then there's emotions so emotions can be connected to the circumstances around you or the emotions can be connected to the heart of god and so obviously you want to say as part of the glory of god flowing through you you want to connect your emotions to god so you want to ask the question lord what are you feeling and you want to then feel what god is feeling and so you can practice that i i many times i i come before someone before i pray and i ask the lord lord what is your feelings what's your emotions about this person and then the lord let me feel those emotions and then from that point i can minister to the person and then you got your choice and uh, then you got your will okay so now choice and will it uh, has very much to do the choices with your desires and so your will is something that you surrender to the lord so you say lord i don't want my will but i want your will and then i choose you i choose to desire after you to set my attention my affection uh, on you and so that's our choices so you got these seven gates of the soul so the glory of god starts uh, uh, with the glory inside of you through your gateway of first love into your spirit and then through those eight gates of the spirit into your soul through these seven gates of the soul uh, into your body and then uh, from your body the gates there is your ear your eye your skin your mouth and your nose and so with uh, those you're going to see perceive you're going to declare you're going to speak the word of god you're going to smell uh, you're going to discern and so your body can then function in this dual realm where you are so this realm where we are is both natural and spiritual and so the lord made it absolutely possible for you to bring the glory that's in heaven into this earth through your gateways most people want to see the kingdom of god come out of the inside of them to the outside environment that's now once they understand that whole idea or that they are actually a gate but what they forget is before the river can fall out of them they need to establish a seat of government of the kingdom of god in their heart and then also a seat of government in the kingdom of heaven so what there is is actually three places where there's a similar pattern there's a pattern in heaven there's a pattern in your heart and then there's a pattern in your environment around you and so as you go into heaven and you sit in jesus in heavenly places then he comes and he sits in your heart and so you build two thrones a throne in your heart and a throne in heaven and once those two thrones are established then the lord rank you up and he set you and present you as a son of god so that the river and the government of god can then flow out of your innermost being and change the environment around you and so it all starts on the inside of you if there is any sin if there is any stuff that's blocking the gates on the inside of you then that's going to stop that government that comes from heaven that goes into your heart to flow out of you and so it's a cleansing process and so the lord wants us to live without sin but not in our own power with the power that he provides for us so i want to encourage you we're going to go through this material and in this whole process look for clues how you can connect 
your spirit to the kingdom that's in heaven and through that power that you receive from him he's going to actually give you uh, the fire of god to cleanse all your guideways so that you can be in a position of authority as a king and as a son of god to release god's river in this earth ian clayton has spent years working through the gateways of his spirit soul and body he gives the following testimony this is a process that i've worked with for years and it works it has been more than just a diagram it has been a life's work to get who and what I am manifesting on the outside so I can be present with you here, but also very present with the Spirit and the presence of God. It is a most wonderful thing to be able to understand the flow of the move and the presence of God and what happens to it. In my own life, I can recall many experiences where I would be so hungry for the presence of God and yet my sin would be talking to me. I would be praying in tongues and the presence of God would be there, but then a thought would flicker into my brain and all the anointing would go out of the room like a balloon going down. I would think, what is the use of this? What began for me was a journey of trying to understand how to release the glory of the presence of God from the kingdom of God that is within me. There is two realms where we encounter the presence and the government of God in the realm of the Spirit. Now the first realm is the realm of the kingdom of God. So Jesus said to his disciples, the kingdom of God is inside of you. And so that's the first place. There is in your heart a throne, there is in your heart gates, and in your heart is a place where the kingdom of God is. And that's where Jesus is sitting on his throne, and that is from that place where the river of God is flowing out into the natural environment. So that's the kingdom of God inside of you. The second realm is the kingdom of heaven and that's on the outside of you. That's not in this natural realm where we are. This is actually there where God is. Right now, actually, if you think about it, this earth and this environment where we are, are inside the kingdom of heaven. But the kingdom of heaven is also on the outside of that. And so that is the place where Jesus is seated on the right hand of the Father, uh, that is the place where we are seated in Christ. That's the place where Eden is, the places where we go to Him. And so there's two realms. And it's very important that we understand that the realm on the inside of us is actually a, a, a copy or a mirror or a pattern according to the pattern of God that is there in heaven. And so as we go into heaven, the Lord shows us how it should look like. And then we build that same uh, image, that same pattern in our own heart. Now, an uh, uh, interesting picture of that would be the tabernacle. So the Lord took Moses into the heavens and he showed him the tabernacle. With the outer court, the inner court, the holy place and the holies of holies. And so then when God made the man, he also made him with the outer court as the body, the inner court as the soul, uh, the holy place, that's the spirit and the holies of holies, that's the glory of God in the man and then in the same pattern also the tabernacle of god then manifests around us with the outer court the inner court the holy place and the holy of holies and so even moses when he built the tabernacle he built it according to that same pattern and so that's a picture of the kingdom of heaven and that is the the template and then the kingdom of god in our heart and then the the kingdom of god on the earth that comes out of us Let's take a moment and talk about why people see demons but they don't see angels. Now, everything that we see in our imagination screen, uh, we see there because of anchors uh, of past memories that's already saved in our memory. And so whenever new information comes to our imagination screen, then our hippocampus compares what we are seeing and what's already stored in our memory and then compares it to, and if it looks real and relevant, then it will be broadcasted onto our imagination screen. Uh, so that means uh, if you see something, and um, you, maybe your spirit man is seeing an angel uh, and uh, uh, there is no memory or something saved in, in your mind about what you're seeing right now, then your hippocampus might look at it and says, no, this doesn't look right. I'm rather just going to scrap it. I'm not going to uh, s put any focus on that. And then uh, you look, uh, you trying to focus, but you don't see anything. Although your spirit man is seeing that angel perfectly and is hearing exactly what he's saying.
thing, but in your imagination screen, that information just never makes it there so that you with your soul actually know that the angel is talking to you. And so uh, the whole idea is uh, in your soul, uh, you have your conscious, your unconscious and your subconscious mind and in that is saved all these images. And so there needs to be images that compare with what you are seeing from your spirit man. And we call that an anchor. You need to give your soul an anchor to be able to see in the realm of the spirit. Okay, now, if you think about uh, your life uh, when you're a young person, okay, um, then uh, you use from when you were small you start to build anchors uh, to see things in the natural realm and even to see things in the realm of the spirit uh, young people especially when they're in the age group of four five and six years old they tend to sometimes see nightmares or they have bad dreams uh, and they'll just complain and say i had a bad dream but really what what actually happened uh, they saw a cartoon or a little movie or something like that and there was an image in there uh, that was stored in their memory and so then when the demonic spirit came in the night to them then the hippocampus said but this is real because i have a memory of what i'm seeing right now and then that uh, young person gets to know that um, demonic spirit or that evil thing that they're seeing uh, because their hippocampus says to them that is relevant and that is real and so when you're small uh, you could have a bad dream and that can open up an anchor for a demon of fear in your life and so once that that demon of fear has enough um, let's say space in your memory meaning images and experiences that's recorded in your memory then that demon of fear can anytime come to you and make you fearful and start to speak to you and your hippocampus is every time going to say but this is relevant this is real you need to pay attention to this also uh, you can build the anchor of rejection in your life. Uh, so what happens? Uh, you have experienced during the daytime, one of your uh, friends reject you or a girl or a boy uh, and then uh, or maybe even a school teacher and you feel that hurt of rejection. So in the night, your brain rehears that rejection. And so the, uh, the demon of rejection then comes to you and he starts talking to you in the same way as that teacher or that boy or that girl spoke to you. And then suddenly your hippocampus says, but this is relevant, this is real. And then in essence, it opens up a gate and a door for a demon of uh, rejection to start to speak to you and to become operative in your life. And the same, you could have a demon of bitterness. Okay, so something happened, you really got, was hurt through what happened and you feel upset about it. And then in the night again, you sleep and that uh, memories of what happened gets rehearsed in your in your soul and that makes you bitter and the moment you accept and that bitterness seed kind of germinates inside of you then a demon of bitterness can come to you and it can start to speak to you and he'll just say to you what you already are rehearsing in your mind and before you know it uh, the hippocampus says but this bitterness is real it's relevant let's pay attention to it and before you know it you have in your gateways a demon of bitterness that is sitting there okay uh, another example would be sickness so you are outside in the sun or it rains or it's cold or something happens uh, and um, you shiver a little bit uh, and in your brain then it says well you don't feel comfortable right now the moment you have those thoughts uh, that connect you to that sickness then a demon of sickness and a firmity will come and say well you don't really feel well you know you are not only uncomfortable i think maybe your head is a little sore is your throat not sore there what is that cough that you're feeling right there and before and the moment you come into agreement with it then your hippocampus says well this must be real and relevant so i need to focus on that and broadcast information uh, received from this uh, demon of sickness and infirmity on my imagination screen and the moment you come into agreement with that and you do what it says it wants you to do then you've accepted it into your life and then it can become operational and you can get sick now what you want to do is all of those gates in your life uh, that you open up for, for demonic entities to start speaking to you or you want to bring before them before the lord you want to confess them as sin you want to uh, take responsibility for those and you want to renounce it you want to close those gates repent of it apply the blood of jesus over those areas ask the holy spirit to sit in those gates uh, and then you want to start working on anchors in your life of God, of heaven, of the Holy Spirit, of angels, uh, so that you don't have demons speaking to you, but 
rather have uh, all of what is in heaven in, in the light of God speak into your life. So one of the things that uh, I love to do is I love to listen to the voice of God. And so what you, you do is you can maybe think about your own dad's voice or your mother. And when I speak words maybe of affirmation and how much they love you. And you can think about those thoughts and then you can focus on God's voice and he will start to speak to you and he will affirm you and tell you how much he loves you. And now you're building an anchor in your uh, soul for the voice of God. And now God can start speak to, uh, speak to you. And every time when God speaks, then your hypercampus is going to say, wow, this is relevant. You must listen because God is speaking to you. So in the same way, you can build an anchor uh, to see Jesus in your life. Now, I love the activation where you stand in front of the gate in your heart and you open up uh, the, the gate in your heart and you allow Jesus to come in and you see Jesus. Now, from when I was a young child, when I would worship and I would be in a worship service, I would raise up my hand, I would close my eyes and I would see the line of the tribe of Judah or sometimes just the face of Jesus or His light right in front of me. And every time I feel so loved when He comes and He embraces me with His love and He fills me up with who He is. And so... In my hypercampus, I built an anchor for that. And so even today when I'm worshiping and I just feel that same feeling, I see that same image, then my hypercampus immediately say, this is relevant, this is real, and pays attention to that. And then the, the light and the love and the glory of God can flood into my soul and into my spirit, man. Okay, so in the same way, uh, I've uh, built an anchor for the move of the Holy Spirit. So I can actually uh, be in a room and I can feel the wind of the Holy Spirit. I can see the river of the Holy Spirit uh, that's moving there. Uh, sometimes I can feel that inner small voice of the Holy Spirit starting to speak to me. But I had to many, many times look for it, ask for it, uh, you know, declare and, and say to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, please come and move here uh, in our place. Let the role of God flow. And then uh, in a situation, maybe I need to spend some money. I asked the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, do you want me to buy this? Is this fine? Can I have it or no? Uh, should I not do it? And sometimes he will say yes, sometimes no. And so I've trained my hypercampus to have an anchor for the Holy Spirit. And it's so important that we have to do it. Another anchor is Jesus walking into your heart. So I talked about seeing Jesus, but uh, it's important for me uh, that you must see the door opening up and how Jesus is walking into uh, the, the your heart. So one thing that you can do is you can ask maybe your spouse or your, your mother or your father or your child to stand behind the door, to knock on the door and to say, this is Jesus. Then you open up the door and then he walks into your heart. So you see that. Now it's not really Jesus that walked in, but what you're doing, you're building an anchor so that when Jesus walks in that your hypercampus will have a, a memory uh, to recollect from so that when Jesus really walks into your heart that you can actually see it in the realm of the spirit and so that's a, such a wonderful anchor every time when you start to minister open up the door see how Jesus comes in see how he embraces you how he fills uh, your whole heart with his light and his love uh, and that's an important anchor to have in your life Okay, so another anchor is the role of the Father. Now, the first time I did it, I almost fell off my chair because of the amount of the glory of God that just sat so heavy on me as I went into the role of the Father. Now, one thing that you can do is go to a river or go to a swimming pool or even your bathtub at home. Hopefully, you've got a big enough bathtub and you can kind of just go into the water and just close your eyes and just sit there in the water and just feel the love of God is start to flow through you. Now, what I always feel when I'm in the role of the Father is my uh, my body or my spirit body is kind of um, resistant to the love of God. And then the more I open up my heart, the more I become like a sponge and the love of God can literally just flow through me until I become one with Him. And it's as if I'm one with Him and one with the river, one with His love. Uh, and I actually feel the embrace of the Father while I am in that river and it feels hot and cold and full of light and full of joy and energy all at the same time so that's an anchor for the the role of the father now each one of these anchors it doesn't just happen with a decision it takes a little bit of time to practice it to to figure out the way how can i train my soul to perceive things of the spirit another anchor uh, is angels now the way i started to experience and see angels is i would every time i would walk into a house uh, i would uh, just look because there's a lot of times angels standing at doorways 
Uh, I also have felt when I would travel these angels around me or sometimes when I walk and I pray for people these angels standing around me and um, when I'm alone and I'm walking then I feel the protection around me so what I did I, I make a conscious decision to be aware of angels when I meet uh, someone else then I uh, I remember this one time it was a spiritual leader I didn't know him from nowhere but the moment I saw him and I saw a train of angels it's probably like eight or nine angels in a row and some of them were holding his rope and some had documents and scrolls and I saw all of these angels walking with this man there was like a, a glow that was coming out of these angels and then the Lord said to me uh, those angels started to work with this man because of the level of anointing and authority that is on his life and so uh, you can uh, build the anger in your soul to see angels uh, but you have to make a decision to say Lord I want to see angels and then everywhere you go be aware of the fact that there is angels around you all right another anchor is an anchor for men in white linen and a cloud of witnesses and so many times when you listen to Justin Paul Abraham or Ian Clayton or even Nancy Cohn they will talk about they were meeting with Enoch or they saw David or they saw Paul in the Bible or or uh, Elijah or Moses or different ones uh, in the scripture Abraham uh, Noah uh, Job and as they meet uh, these saints of old uh, um, that is the cloud of witnesses that he talks about in Hebrews chapter uh, 12 uh, from verse 1 and so uh, you can again uh, build an anchor inside of you to become aware of the cloud of witnesses now I uh, I don't encounter clou the cloud of witnesses very often but many times when I go into the courts of heaven uh, and I would be in a court and I would go through my court case then many times uh, different ones of the cloud of witnesses would show up and would come into the court but the cloud of witnesses also wants to come into our meetings where we minister where we prophesy and where the Holy Spirit is moving so they can also uh, see what revelation we are functioning on okay uh, another um, anchor that works really well uh, is an anchor of walking in Eden. Now as a child uh, on Sundays of the church my parents took us into the botanical garden there in Harry Smith and in those days it was a beautiful garden and and uh, we'd buy some snacks and then we would have lunch uh, there in the botanical garden and I remember walking on all those beautiful uh, green grass uh, and uh, through all of those plants and beds with flowers and that all kinds of uh, uh, different landscapes there and uh, all of that walking with my dad and when I was younger especially I would hold his hand when we walk and so that would build an anchor in my mind so I would think about that and then I would see Jesus and how he takes my hand and how I walk with him in the garden and by the river and by those beautiful uh, 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 willow trees and so as I as I um, uh, see how I walk with my father then the Lord paints a picture over that image that's in my soul of how I walk with Jesus and how he starts to talk with me in me and in that process he actually translates me so that I can start to perceive what uh, the Lord is showing me in my spirit man okay uh, let me just say one more anchor uh, and that is anchor to go into the courts of heaven so the first time I went into the courts it took me I, I went first with other people and that was quite easy but then when I was by myself it took me like a long time like over half an hour to get into the courts I shouted I praised the Lord I thanked him I entered in and then finally I had a breakthrough and I was uh, in the courts of heaven and then ever since it was easier and quicker for me to go into the courts because I was able to build the anchor in my soul to go into the courts of heaven so coming back to the original questions why do people see demons but not angels if you can see demons you can see angels the reason you cannot see angels is usually because the inside of you and who you are is not purified enough to be able to see the right thing the principle in the diagram of the body, the soul and the spirit goes beyond just you. A family has a body life and a soul life and a spirit life. A church has a body life, a soul life and a spirit life. A city has a body life, a soul life and a spirit life. And a nation has a body life and a soul life and a spirit life. A big problem in a church today is that we have never been taught how to take hold of our own body life our own soul life and our own spirit life to release the glory through those doorways. We have never been taught to manifest heaven, first in Jerusalem, then in Samaria and then in the other most parts of our city. 
And so that comes from Acts chapter 1 verse 8. So many of us have been trying to go into the outermost parts of our city or world. And when we do, we get hit and wonder why. It is usually because Jerusalem is not purged yet. And so Jerusalem is a, a picture of your heart. And so you want the gateways of your heart. And like I was talking about these anchors, you want the anchors in your heart uh, to be functional before you go out and say, I want to release the glory of God on other regions and other places. Thank you so much for joining us. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.